So when we actually talk about blockchain, when we talk about consumer to consumer, those are really aren't, that's really not blockchain, that's cryptocurrencies. So when we talk about blockchain, we're not actually talking about C to C because those are cryptocurrencies and that's more of a speculation market. Um, Bitcoin is that 10 year open source experiment. We're gonna see how it goes. So we're not talking about C to C. When we talk about C to C, we're actually talking about that network effect because the Bitcoin blockchain is a network. So we're actually talking about, when we talk about B2B, we're talking about enterprise solutions because enterprises, they need that network and it can sustain that network. And so when we talk about blockchain, we're basically talking about B2B. And so this is where you'll see blockchain going, B2B, ignoring cryptocurrencies, because even when you think about B2C, you're actually not thinking about that because blockchain at the B2B level, um, by the time it hits the C, people don't actually wanna know that you're running MongoDB, Excel, or what your operating system is. They just want it to be easy. So is it safe to say the B2B model benefits the B2C model? Yeah, this is an app, this becomes an afterthought, right? No okay. one cares. It's default. Or... It's default, okay. right? If it's easy and simple to use, then it's part of your business. Mm -hmm. So the next iteration of blockchain, our understanding of its purpose is all B2B. However, in 2016 and 20, I'm sorry, in 2017, 2018, those $26.8 billion that was raised in crowdfunding via ICOs, tokens, et cetera, that actually addressed two basic needs. Startups need money to scale, that's your first one, and users want to be owners. Right. And so now we have this place where, uh, look, don't get me wrong, of this $26.8 billion, 90% of it was just, let's just call it fraud and speculation. But that still leaves you $2 billion for startups who are actually trying to grow businesses. So um, this is where, do you have a question? I think it's um, inaccurate to call <laughs> that uh, money raised in, in, in crowdfunding uh, as far as fraud and speculation. Speculation, yes, but not necessarily fraud. So when I say when I, the, the fraud component comes with the ICOs, the initial coin offers. Oh, okay. That's, okay. The, that's the bullshit. That's the fraud. That's because the fraud. ICOs are crowdfunding. Yes. Right. Okay. ICOs are a type of crowdfunding because you're going out to a bunch of people and asking them for funds on the internet. It's crowdfunding. Right. It's unregulated crowdfunding, but it's still crowdfunding. Right. This is a moment where I don't care what, what uh, species your duck is, it's still a duck. Or whether it's, dark, it's a Darkwing duck or Scrooge McDuck, it's still a duck. So in this instance, there were some startups who are actually looking for money to scale. Because at this point, we're only talking about scaling businesses. Because most businesses, when they went out to the ICO, they weren't actually ready to scale. Because they weren't a business, they're an expensive hobby, or they're an idea. And there's a difference when your business is ready to scale. Because typically, you figure out what you're going to sell, you have a product, and you started selling it. Scaling is slightly different. But the other part is users want to be owners. People haven't had the ability or the option to own part of these businesses. But with technology and fractional ownership, you can actually do that. And this is where I think that uh, Reg CF crowdfunding in particular, uh, particularly in the States, will be a big difference. Because it all comes down to this, on your crowdfunding campaign. And so of the $26.8 billion that was raised in the ICO, STO model from 2016 to 2018, most of it was fraud, but it still demonstrated startups wanted to scale, people wanted to be owners. Mm -hmm. So in this next, next iteration of awesomeness, the key is when you're look, thinking about your crowdfunding campaign, it's not to look for investment. That is the dumbest thing to do. Because people are like, oh, I'm gonna do this STO, who I'm gonna do this equity token offering. Mm -hmm. um, the London Stock Exchange, they just did an equity token offering or an STO offering. And so they don't actually do it for investing. You do it for, it's not for investing. Get this idea out of your head. The Crowdfunding people, campaigns are not for investments. No, okay. the, that is the biggest fallacy ever. If you're a startup and you do a crowdfunding campaign, you want to do it for branding first. The reason you want to do it for branding first is because you're literally about to spend fifty to hundred thousand dollars on an exercise to raise money. Mm -hmm. Don't just raise money; build and develop your brand. Because if people don't know you, they can't like you, and if they don't like you and your products, they're not going to buy your products or invest in you. So, crowdfunding is actually a branding exercise first and foremost. Next to this branding 
is this beautiful thing called sales and marketing. So if you're gonna do a crowdfunding campaign uh, for a reg, let's say you're gonna do a reg CF, you're gonna spend probably 20K to 50K just to raise a million bucks. If your only thing you're spending this money on is for investments, you're fucking up because you have an opportunity to do a branding sales and marketing exercise, particularly if you're an existing business. Don't just tell your, your potential clients and customers, hey, you can only buy into our company. Let them know what your company stands for. Let them know what good products or service you have because you might not buy equity into my business, but you might buy my product. Right. So what is more important? So I would say to kind of round that off, your crowdfunding campaign is really a customer acquisition campaign, right? Because we hope that the point is that your retail investors will also be your customers. And if they're not investors, at least they become your customers. <laughs> so when you think about, we're not going to spend twenty to fifty thousand dollars to do investments. Right. We're going to spend twenty to fifty thousand dollars on a customer acquisition plan that flips while you're doing crowdfunding, because now you're not saying buy equity in my company because your life, the LTV lifetime value of that person might be shit if they're an investor, right? They might only ever invest 500 bucks in you, right? But what's their lifetime value as a customer? Let's right. say you sell markers, right? And it's like, oh, I sell, we we're just talking about this Fitbit. It's $219 on Amazon. And so I buy one, but I'm going to buy a new one every three years. Right. And so it's like, oh, I know what that lifetime value is. So when startups and when startups and founders and businesses are looking at crowdfunding options, even if you're only going to try to raise a million seventy dollars using Reg CF, uh, there's a method to this madness where you don't treat it as an investment exercise and you treat it as a customer acquisition exercise. And I guess the once you've created what this customer acquisition plan looks like, then you also want to re, you want a retention plan because that Fitbit in three years will need to be replaced, right? Yes, yeah. yes. And so there's that larger thing into strategy right. that goes into not only your customer acquisition, engagement, retention, um, but most people, they're thinking, oh, I just need to raise money for my business, but they're not thinking that sales resolves all problems. If you're selling enough shit, if you're selling enough your good product or service, you don't need to raise money. So don't think of right. That's the best way to raise capital. That's right. Don't think of crowdfunding as an investment. Think of it as a customer acquisition overall plan. So um, we're actually going to talk about this off the video because we have some clients who we're going to run this through this process through them because everybody in the blockchain space they think. They're going decentralized, but they're all entrepreneurs and startups. They're all part of their own tribe. They're actually just looking for ways to raise capital for their business. So if you have an idea, you're not quite there yet, go develop your product and get a sale. Whatever it is that you're doing, get a sale. If you feel your only option is to raise money, it's not actually a business. Raising money is not a business. It's a thing you do for your business. So you got to figure out what your business is. Um, and then, of course, there's a little bit of method to this madness that we're gonna talk about offline. Um, so if you have a question or comment, drop it down below. And this is how I'm gonna have meetings with Maureen from here on out. <laughs> that way. <laughs> <laughs> that way I'm gonna get a better marker so you guys can see this. Yeah, see a little better. Um, so is it any questions or comments, Maureen? No, no, no questions or comments. All right, bye. Bye.